have some audio sound bites from President Obama a half hour ago at the White House. And then I have some facts and figures to illustrate how he's lying to us. Pure and simple. Don't know how else to say it. Let's just get started. Here he is bragging, bragging, folks, about job creation. This morning, uh, we learned that our business has created 172,000 new jobs in the month of July. That didn't happen. That means that we've now created 4.5 million new jobs over the last 29 months. Didn't happen. And 1.1 million new jobs so far this year. Didn't happen. Those are our neighbors and family members finding work and the security that comes with work. Sadly, folks, there were 195,000 fewer people employed in this country in July than there were in June. There were not 172,000. It might have been 172,000 new jobs. That's even debatable. But it was a net wash because there are 195, th I'm, these are numbers from the BLS report, I'm not making it up. Obama's Department of Labor's own numbers. 195,000 fewer people employed in the United States in July than there were in June. We lost jobs. We also lost more people from the labor force. The national unemployment rate went up. 8.2 to 8.3 percent, 150,000 people simply dropped out of the labor force. Actually, that number is 155,000, which means that this, what number is he using? 172,000 new jobs that uh, he's trumpeting are actually, it's a wash, folks. No net new jobs. 195,000 fewer people employed. 150,000 simply dropped out of the labor force. That's the pattern. The percentage of people working continues to shrink. The percentage or the number of jobs available in the country continues to shrink. Well, here's how they got there. In June, according to the BLS, there had been 142.4 million people employed. In July, it's 142.2. 200,000 fewer people employed. He goes out, we created 172,000 jobs. It's a, it's a lie. When plugged in with all the other relevant data. And that's why the real unemployment rate, what's called U6, when you, when you include the people who've given up looking, it's now 15%. And our buddy Jim Pethokoukos has his analysis of the numbers out. We do this every month. We've been doing this every month for three months. Been trying to hammer the truth home for th I've been three years. Every, every month for three years, it's the same old thing. The regime comes out, lies big time. And, and everybody's trying to tell us, essentially, we got a burgeoning, growing economy. we got the worst. There is no recovery. It's the worst recovery ever. Since the Great Depression. I, I would like for the president to have told us what's working. What it is that he's doing that's causing all this wonderful news to be reported today. He didn't take any questions. 15% is the U6 unemployment number. 15%. And if, this 8.3% number, if... The labor force participation rate were today what it was when Obama was inaugurated. That number would be eleven percent. In fact, probably could go ahead and call it eleven percent in order to try to make the point because the labor force has shrunk. This man's economy has been so bad that there are over two million fewer jobs to have in this country. That's why everybody talks about job growth. It's not as though there are jobs unfilled out there. It's that there aren't any jobs besides those that we have, and we keep shrinking. That number keeps shrinking every month. Yeah, oh yeah, in pockets, you can find companies with openings, people looking for work. But nationwide, overall, the universe of jobs able to be filled is down by over 2 million. That's why job creation, new businesses, ed entrepreneurial growth, that's why 
the recipe that's called for, for that is what's not being done. That's why we are talking about job growth. We need to create jobs so that people have jobs to apply for. There aren't a bunch of jobs unfilled out there. In July, the number of people in the civilian labor force, 155 million. That's down by 150,000 from June. Every hard number is down. Every seasonally adjusted number is down. In fact, it's gotten so bad that even last night, the New York Times committed a random act of journalism. And on a blog post, one of their economics writers through cold water, before he even knew what the numbers were, and he might have known what the numbers were going to be, for all I know, through cold water on whatever was announced today, because it's really, really bad out there. And it's he's, the point was, it's going to be really, really easy to misunderstand some misleading numbers that might make it look good, or better than it is. The New York Times last night... Admittedly, on a blog post. Random act of journalism. Here's the next Obama soundbite. This is where he says, we're not going to get where we need to be by going back. Let's acknowledge, we've still got too many folks out there who are looking for work. We've got more work to do on their behalf. Here's the thing. We are not going to get there. We're not going to get to where we need to be if we go back to the policies that helped to create this mess in the first place. You, sir, are the one creating the mess. Eh, the days of who created the mess are long gone. You inherited the mess, and you've doubled down on it. You have made the mess even worse. You want to go back and compare? We've done this, too. You want to go back and compare? It's amazing. These guys love Reagan now and then. They hate Reagan most of the time, but sometimes they want to invoke Reagan's name. It's amazing, really. Except when it comes to comparing economic recoveries. Then they don't want to talk about Ronald Reagan. During this time in Reagan's first term, our economy was growing at 6%, the GDP. Unemployment was dropping like a rock from double digits under Carter. We were creating 600,000 jobs a month. And when Reagan was done, we had created over 20 million new jobs. Economic growth for 25 years like the nation had not seen in a century. So, yeah, that's what Obama says we can't go back to. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Ideological straitjacket. A closed-minded economic bigot is what Barack Obama is. Yeah, folks. I'm sorry. I am mad. I am mad at what is being done to this country, and I get infuriated listening to an arrogant know-it-all tell the world, essentially, that he doesn't have the slightest clue what he's talking about, while sounding condescending and arrogant as though he's got all the answers. In the meantime, you go through these numbers, uh, 150,000 jobs, people leave the labor, those are real people. Those are real lives. that are being destroyed. And I'm sorry, food stamps doesn't make up for it. Welfare benefits don't make up for it. Disability payments don't make up for it. Real people are being affected by this. And it's just, it's, it's, it's disheartening to see it. Greatest nation on earth, economic engine of the world, the economy that has created the wealth of the world, essentially under assault here by a bunch of arrogant economic bigots, know-it-alls, elites, nothing but a bunch of theoreticians whose only experience with any of this is talking about it in the faculty lounge or in class. And here's one more. This is Obama. 
Yep, couldn't finish this off without telling us that patriotic Americans realize they're not paying enough taxes. Keep in mind, we're talking about folks like me going back to the tax rates that existed under Bill Clinton. If you remember, that was when we created 23 million new jobs. We went from deficits to surplus. And folks at the top did well, too, because when middle class families have money in their pockets, they go out and buy that new car or that new appliance or the new computer for their kids or they go out to a restaurant whoa, whoa, or, whoa, 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 heaven whoa. forbid, they take a vacation once in a while. And what? That money goes back into the economy and businesses do well because they've got more customers. And, you know, here's the thing. There are a lot of well-to-do Americans, patriotic Americans, who understand this and are willing to do the right thing. You hear that? He just redefined trickle up. Did you catch that? The, the the money starts with the middle class, and as long as the middle class have money, then they go out and spend it, and that's how the rich get rich. Wow. Wow. F folks at the top did well, too, because when middle class families have money in their pockets, they go out and buy that new car, that new appliance, or that new computer for their kids when they've got money in their pocket, and boy, that's that's when the rich really... So, we got to get money into the hands of the middle class. How are we going to do that? We're going to do it food stamps. Trickle up. So we got a brand new economic definition here for Mr. Wizard of Smart. And we will be right back. Open Line Friday resumes after this. <laughs> 